I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, November the 7th, brought to you in part by VitaFirm, profitability against all odds. VitaFirm is a line of nutritional supplements for beef cattle that maximize energy and forage utilization for successful production. For more information, go to VitaFirm.com. Also, Beaver County Stockyards are uh, going to have a pretty good run here on the regular cattle auction this Tuesday here today. Over 4,300 head. Uh, a lot of trailer cattle coming in on Monday night. Going to be a lot of calves. Over 2,500 calves. Uh, a lot of them won't be weaned, but mo a big part of them will have had uh, their shots. A lot of long strings, many, many uh, consignments of calves of over 100 head, including nearly 300 calves coming from Stevens Land and cattle near Guyman. But it'll be a lot of yearlings too. Uh, at least 17 loads of yearling steers, most of them weighing in the eights and nines, and a couple of loads of heifers there. So if you're interested in some of those cattle there, get on to dvauction.com, call ahead, get approved. View and bid Beaver County Stockyards. Cash interest and futures frustration. I uh, was impressed on Monday with higher volume feeder cattle auctions. Uh, Oklahoma City had 9,300 head. Joplin had 7,500 head. Many other sales had big runs. Uh, the Northern Plains, especially South Dakota, has been having big runs here. Uh, even last week where the Southern Plains didn't because of the wet and cold spell there. But uh, uh, they're holding up to these uh, heavier receipts. And I say they're heavier receipts of calves, but not nearly as heavy as what we're used to. Uh, like I said uh, on our last visit, still haven't heard of anybody having too much trouble getting trucks or being able to get the cattle moved out of the sale barns from around the country there. But uh, it was impressive how the market withstood the heavier receipts. I think we have plenty of demand. Uh, that big moisture that we had last week coming through the Southern Plains, North Texas and Oklahoma especially has really uh, boosted this uh, wheat pasture. Uh, so now they're expecting to have plentiful wheat pasture grazing and going to be able to turn out a little bit sooner than what they thought. Uh, now traditionally they would like to turn those wheat cattle out November the 15th. Uh, it may be a little bit later than that, but they are going to have some good wheat pasture grazing in the Southern Plains, guys. So uh, going to be good uh, calf demand, and it showed on Monday on your heavier receipts. Uh, so we had good interest on the cash. Uh, the board on Monday, another thing, down hard again. Uh, and I, uh, it's just that there's so little trade. It's such, a, it's such a small pool, a shallow little pool there, and there's nobody trading uh, your cattle futures. When we do get some trade, and then the algorithms take over, they just run that thing one way and then the other. Feeder cattle futures down well over three dollars on Monday. That's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, swinging back and forth here and there. Uh, there's absolutely no reason for it at all. Your corn price has been uh, very steady here uh, for the last couple of weeks as we near harvest. I've uh, been up here in, in South Dakota uh, and, and lucky enough to stay with my, my good buddy Steve Hashey with Hashey Insurance there in Lake Preston, South Dakota. But uh, it's, uh, you, you, you can tell that they're just about done with harvest up here. Uh, drove straight up through Nebraska. Didn't see hardly any fields at all that hadn't been harvested in Nebraska. When I got into South Dakota, starting to see a few, uh, but they've been working rampant, I know, the last couple of days and just uh, not much yet to go here. So uh, I think we'll have some more interest in calves as we start to do that. But uh, there's been, like I said, no move in your corn market, and yet uh, feeder cattle futures just whips on back one way and then the other, and it is getting ridiculous uh, and getting frustrating for the industry, and, and uh, they're about tired of it. Uh, live cattle futures, of course, got sucked down uh, with your feeder cattle futures there, but, uh, you know, we couldn't really say what the reasons were, were because there's really not any reasons. Uh, we did hear that... Uh, uh, we did see some uh, analysts come out with their expectations for the next cattle on feed. 
Uh, we're still pretty butt hurt from the last cattle on feed uh, that was just two weeks ago. And now we've already got to worry about another cattle on feed. Why do we have to keep putting up with these cattle on feeds uh, that are just swinging your futures market and particularly one way than the other, costing these ranchers and, and cow-calf producers uh, valuable money on their sales? Uh, and and it, it, it shouldn't, shouldn't have to happen. There's no reason that we have to sit in fear every month of that cattle on feed report. But uh, it, the, the, the estimates of the of next cattle on feed report, which is going to be November the 17th, uh, which is 10 days away, but it was a, it was a narrower time than usual. But uh, the, the estimates are for it to be bearish. So I guess the board has to set up for a bearish cattle on feed report. Maybe it'll come out normal and then we can have a plus one. But, you know, the industry really doesn't need all this all this uh, volatility because of some kind of a NASH report that comes out that we're not even real sure how, uh, how correct it is. It might be official, but it may not be correct. But uh, they've got the cattle on feed uh, estimates higher than a year ago on some of these uh, early estimates. Uh, and, that, and that's from the, the analysts that, uh, uh, not the ones that put out the, the actual guess, but just some of them that are talking about it got the marketings down really big. Of course, we know that your uh, your packers have really tightened down and slowed down your chain speed, so uh, we're not getting much harvest there, and, and in fact, we're not gonna have much marketings there, but uh, it's, it's uh, we're a little bit uh, hard, to, hard to figure this. Uh, this board, you know, we're not even over last uh, month's uh, effects of the cattle on feed report, and we're already getting the effects of the next one. That shouldn't do that. Let's talk about your board uh, on Monday. December live cattle futures were down 255 at 181.32, with the weighted average almost 185 on live cash steers and our spot cash futures uh, 181.32. Uh, I shouldn't have said cash futures, but our spot futures for December on live cattle 181.32. Uh, there's no reason for that. February down three and a quarter at 181.97. Back months on live cattle down 217 to down 322. Uh, feeder cattle for November down 342 at 237.17. January feeder cattle down 332, 236.42. And your back months on feeder cattle down 320 to 375. No reason for it, guys. December corn was absolutely steady unchanged from the previous day's settlement at 477 and a quarter. November beans up 13 cents at 1340 and a half. Kansas City hard red winter wheat for December up two and a quarter cent at 645 and three quarters. Your weighted average on last week's uh, minimal negotiated fed cattle trade out of your five area feeding region. There was 55,200 uh, last week comparing to 67,400 the previous and 73,900 the same week a year ago. <laughs> Live sales of steers and heifers in the five area feeding region ranged from 181 to 186. That's steady to a buck higher. Weighted average on live steers, like I said a while ago, 184.89, nearly 185. And they sucked the board on December live cattle down to 181.32. Uh, but that 184.89 was up 87 cents to your previous week's five area weighted average on steers. Dress trade last week from 287 to 292.75. That was steady to 75 cents higher. And your weighted average on uh, dress steers 291.92 up a dollar 86. So pretty good gains uh, in your pen cattle last week. Could have got more if they would have hung on. Uh, and not caved there, but uh, uh, we'll see what the bids come out. They'll be hungry again early this week uh, because uh, they're, they're pretty much hand to mouth right now. Nationwide last week negotiated 69,500 compared to 77,500 the previous week and 88,300 same week a year ago. Uh, the 69,500 about 28 percent or just over 19,000 for the two to four week delivery. 
uh, negotiated grid was 43400 that continues to grow and there's really not any negotiation on the grid base price forward contracts 7900 only and formula sales 257800 on formula still big but of the four of the five areas we get information from last week Iowa sold 25700 Nebraska sold 20000 even Kansas only 6300 at the steady at 185 uh, price and Texas uh, just 3200 head nothing uh, almost any sale barn at all any regional sale barn would have more cattle than they sold negotiated in the entire state uh, or entire feedlot area of Texas western Oklahoma uh, eastern New Mexico but uh, your, your, your market was basically steady in the Southern Plains at 185. Nebraska was steady to two bucks higher at 185. And your dress sales two bucks higher at 292. Box beef cutout values lower again. If you want to believe it, choice cuts down 62 cents at 301.72. Selects down 165 at 270.36. Your slaughter to start the week out was estimated to be light at just 122,000. Talk about what else is going on. Your night latch group, uh, that's Andy and Codell Cunningham there uh, in western Oklahoma and then down also in the Lubbock, Texas area. But uh, they, they can help you with your ag risk management. Uh, they sell all the livestock policies. Uh, they specialize in LRP and livestock gross margin policies which a lot of, of uh, different agents don't use that uh, maybe don't understand it as well but uh, they can show you how can you can use uh, the gross margin policies on your for cattle in the feedlot to hedge them and your corn but they also do lack of rainfall and crop insurance policies so check them out at nightlatch.net talk about your feeder cattle market your real-time index on DV auction Late in the day on Monday, sitting at 236.18, that was up a dollar 24. Uh, so been gaining good here the last several sessions. Uh, I told you earlier I've been in South Dakota, uh, had an excellent group, over 200 people there, maybe 250 people. Ate prime rib and listened to my presentation, uh, sponsored by Heartland Financials, and that's uh, that was in Redfield, South Dakota. Excellent crowd there, had a good time, met a lot of Feeder Flash gang members up here in South Dakota. Uh, met one in particular, new friend there, Tom Martinez, uh, is from down in my country, but been up here operating for uh, for quite some time. And, and uh, he gave me a, a pretty cool gift back here, and I appreciate that very much. I'll be enjoying that at a later date. But uh, talk about your big sales on Monday. Oklahoma National Stockyards in Oklahoma City had 9,300 head compared to the last good test, which was two weeks ago, because last week they had hardly nothing with the market down so hard and then uh, also having uh, that cold snap. But your feeders uh, were mostly steady to $3 higher. Calves were 3 to 9 bucks higher. Uh, your Joplin Regional Stockyard market, 7,500 head. Uh, actually, I want to give you an individual quote from National Livestock, 133 head of 633 pound steers bring 271.50 uh, from National Livestock there at the Oklahoma National Stockyards. Joplin Regional Stockyards, 7,500 head, market was three to nine bucks higher. Individual quote out of Joplin, 207 steers weighed 747 and bring 247.50. Uh, some individual quotes from all around. How about Bowman Livestock Marketing uh, up in North Dakota? That was 59 steers, weighed 516 pounds at 319. I thought that was pretty impressive. How about Lanesboro Sales Commission, Lanesboro, Minnesota? They sell 81 steers, weighed 975 at 239. Uh, these yearlings selling good. Aberdeen Livestock Sales in Aberdeen, South Dakota. 75 steers weighed 817 pounds at 257. But the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere on Monday, your Macrosin, no BS, top quote for the day, come out of Sioux Falls Regional Livestock in Worthing, South Dakota, 
120 steers weighed 886 and bring 249.50. That's your feeder flash for Tuesday.